The title of the message tonight is The Fullness of the Gentiles. What, when, and why? How many of you are Gentiles? Uh, I don't see all the hands. I mean, some of you Gentiles are... <laughs> Listen, I'm not going to say anything bad about you, okay? How many of you here are Gentiles? Can I see your hands? Good. There's a Jewish joke that the Gentiles were invented to pay retail. I don't, I don't, this is, <laughs> listen. You know, the, the two Israelis that were walking in the streets of New York City. And they see a sign outside of a church. A hundred dollars for anyone who convert to Christianity. The Israelis look at each other. And one of them says, I'm going in. The other says, are you crazy to convert to other religions? I'm not going to convert. I'm going to pretend, get the hundred dollars and walk away. <sighs> Do whatever you want. I'm staying here. Well, the Israeli goes in. 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and he's out. So his friend says, so, did you get the money? And his friend says, you Jews, all you think about is money, huh? <laughs> <laughs> The title is The Fullness of the Gentiles. <laughs> and let me read from Romans 11, 25 to 27. For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And so... All Israel will be saved as it is written. The deliverer will come out of Zion and he will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. So obviously salvation here means forgiveness of sins, removal of sins. Obviously you can see that it's something that is part of the covenant of God with Israel, but it cannot be any way apart from the forgiveness of sins, obviously. And you can also see that the apostle Paul as a Jew writing an epistle to a church in Rome that is comprised of both Jews and Gentiles, by the way. He is telling them something very interesting. He says, I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery. Now, mystery in Greek, the word mystery in Greek is mysterion. Mysterion means the counsels of God once hidden, but now revealed in the gospel or some fact thereof, the Christian revelation generally, particular truths or details of the Christian revelation. So we are speaking of something that once was hidden and now revealed to you. Now you finally understand that. And we clearly see that the fullness of the Gentiles is connected with the salvation of Israel. The two walks together. One cannot happen until that other one happens first. And it's very interesting because a lot of people are confused. So when did the time of the Gentiles actually begin? What is it? What are we talking about? Well, first of all, let me say that from the beginning of this world, God never favored any nation over other when it comes to the love of God to all people. The Bible says in Romans 1, 20 to 25, for since the creation's of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. No one. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened, professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible men and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. 
Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness, uncleanness, and in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Isn't that like a description of today? John 1, 10 to 13. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of men, but of God. Romans 1, 16, 17, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So we see that from the very beginning, God himself and the way he created the world and the way he he made this world. That was enough for the people to understand that there is a God. They were without excuse, the Bible says. But at some point in the book of Genesis, God decided to choose a nation through which he's going to demonstrate his love and his ways to the whole world. Every time God works through Israel, he says that the world will see that I am the Lord. And it's very interesting because at some point in history also, something happened. In Acts chapter 13, on the next Sabbath among the whole city came together to hear the word of God. Well, when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and contradicting and blaspheming. They opposed the things spoken by Paul. Then Paul and Barnabas grew bold and said, watch this. It was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you first. Paul was very clear. I understand there is a way, there is an order in which God is doing things. To the Jew first. Not because it's better. Because later on in Romans chapter 2. He says also that, that troubles and judgment will come upon he who does evil to the Jew first. Also and to the Greek. Not only the good things. But Paul understood it was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you first. But since you reject it. And judge yourself unworthy of everlasting life. Behold. We turn to the Gentiles. Wow. Can you imagine the heart of Paul? Longing to save his own brothers and sisters. He even said in the book of Romans. I wish. That if I could be a curse from Christ. If that could save my nation. My people. I would have done that. But Paul understands. You cannot die for the sake of someone else. He must believe. You cannot believe for someone else. But since you reject it. And you judge yourself unworthy of everlasting life. Behold we turn to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us. I have set you as a light to the Gentiles. That you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth. Now when the Gentiles heard this. They were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as had been appointed to eternal life, believed. Wow. Romans 11, 11 to 15, I say then, have they stumbled, the Jewish people, that they should fall? Certainly not. But through their fall, to provoke them to jealousy, salvation has come to the Gentiles. You see, in God, you can't go wrong. He Makes all bad things good for his own name. And it's interesting because now it's, if their fall is riches for the world. And their failure riches for the Gentiles. How much more their fullness. The word fullness 
is a gain here. Here it's for the Jews. For I speak to you Gentiles in as much as I am an apostle to the Gentiles. I magnify my ministry that if by any means I may provoke to jealousy those who are my flesh and save some of them. For if their being cast away is the reconciling of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? So the same way Paul is using the term fullness to speak of the Gentiles and their acceptance, he's also saying when the time comes, then the Jewish people will come to that fullness and will be accepted again. Jesus, when he was on Mount of Olives in Luke 21, and he gave his disciples the Olivet Discourse, the Amazing teaching on the end times. He said, but woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are. This is, by the way, Jesus speaking to the people of Israel. The Olivet Discourse is both an, an, a plea of Jesus to, to the people of Israel as the nation of Israel. And later on to the disciples as the church. Two different things. And in that particular passage, speaking to the Jews, woe to those who are pregnant and those who are nursing babies in those days, for they will be a great distress in the land and wrath upon these people. He's definitely describing the tribulation. And they will fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled by Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Now it's not that he's speaking about the same fulfillment of the Gentiles. Look, he says Jerusalem will be trampled by Gentiles. And he could have said until the times of thereof will be fulfilled. No, he says no. Until the time of the Gentiles to accept the Lord is fulfilled. Romans 11, 30 to 36 as you were once obedient, disobedient to God, and yet have now obtained mercy through their disobedience, even so these also have now been disobedient, that through the mercy shown you, the Gentiles, also may obtain mercy. For God has committed them all to disobedience, that he might have mercy on all. Oh, the depth. Of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgment and his ways past finding out. For who has known the mind of the Lord. And who has become his counselor. Or what has first given to him. And it shall be repaid to him. For of him and through him and to him are all things. To whom be glory forever. Amen. You know, from the very beginning, from Genesis 3, we know that it wasn't the Jews that God chose here. It was mankind that he wanted to save. It was mankind that never were, were meant to be disobedient. But God gave us free will. Without which, by the way, you can never love someone. Without free will, there is no love. And God is not. The only way for you to believe in God is if you have free will. People ask, how come God created evil? No, God did not create evil. God gave you free will. You chose evil. As the same way you could choose good. He actually told you, choose life. But here I put before you these two things. It's, it's here. Now, now the serpent was more cunning than the, any beast of the field which the Lord God has made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, well, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. God warned them. Don't even touch it. You're going to die. He's a good God. I don't want you to die. Don't touch it. Don't eat it. And the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. 
For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God. Knowing good and evil. And from that moment on, Satan has been telling humanity, you are gods. You can be like God. Follow me and I, unlike him, I will reveal to you the secrets. I'll give you the light to see everything. And what is the first thing they do when they come together? Genesis 11. Now the whole earth has one language and one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east. That they found a plain in the land of Shinar. And they dwelt there. And they said to one another. Come let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. And had and brick for stone. And they had asphalt for mortar. And they said Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heaven. And let us make a name for ourselves. Let's, let's be, let's we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. It's us and us and us. But the Lord came down to see the city. It's almost like Genesis chapter 3 when the Lord came down. And then, and, and then the tower which the sons of man had built. And the Lord said, indeed the people are one. And they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language. That they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth. And they Cease building the city. Therefore its name is called Babel. Babel in Hebrew to confuse. Because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. That's how you Gentiles... Look, when I see bacon and eggs, I look at it and I can see how good it looks. And I sprinkle water on it and I say, you're a chicken, you're a chicken and you're a chicken. <laughs> Acts 17, God who made the world and everything in it. Since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. Nor is he worshipped with men's hand, though he needed anything. Since he gives to all life, breath and all things. And he has made from the blood of every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth. And has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwelling. Borders are from God, just so you know. I mean, Satan wants to eradicate borders so there will be chaos borders are from God he determined their dwell the boundaries of their dwelling so that they should seek the Lord in their hope that they might grope for him and find him though he he is not far from each one of us for in him we live and move and have our being. As also some of your own poets have said. For we are also his offspring. This is Paul in the middle of Athens speaking to the Gentiles. To the most boastful Gentiles who think they know everything. They are the smart ones. The educated ones. They are the philosophers. And, and he's saying to them truly these times of ignorance... Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, something shaped by art and men's devising. Truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked. For 2,000 years, God overlooked the shenanigans of all the Gentiles who decided that they better worship a God made of gold or stone or wood. God overlooked, but now, say now, now. commands yes. all, men, all men everywhere, everywhere. To, repent. to repent. Let's say it again. But now, now. he commands yes. all, men, all men everywhere to repent. 
Isn't that sad that churches don't teach on repentance? When that is the first thing that God commands all men everywhere to do in order for them to understand what Jesus is all about. Because he has appointed a day, appointed a day. See, God has the times appointed and it, in which he will judge the world in righteousness by the men whom he has ordained. You know, God is going to judge the world in righteousness. And I was praying for the longest time on, on what do you mean he will, he will judge the world in righteousness by the men whom he has ordained. In other words, he's going to judge the world by Jesus in the future, okay, in righteousness. And then the first time I ever understood the whole millennial kingdom. Because I always ask God, why do we need to go through another thousand years? Okay, seven years tribulation. All right, we're coming. Okay. Can't you just make all things new? New heavens, new earth, new Jerusalem. Why this whole thousand years? And then it was like I understood that these thousand years are the display of God. Of why at the end of those thousand years, his judgment will be in righteousness. Because at the end of the thousand years, after Satan is bound in prison for a thousand years, after there is no more satanic or, or, or demonic presence in, on earth, Jesus himself physically is a political, military, religious leader of the whole world, seated on the throne of David in Jerusalem, in a temple. That's, it cannot get better than this. And yet, when the thousand years have expired, Satan is released for a little bit. And guess what's going to happen? People will join him from the four corners of the world. And their number is the number of the sand of the sea. To what? To fight against God. And that's when God says, you see, I'm judging the world in righteousness. A thousand years I gave them. And that's the end. Because men's heart, as Jeremiah says, is desperately evil and corrupt. So he has appointed two type of people. A Jonah and a Simon bar Jonah. Jonah, the prophet from the region of Nazareth of today. And Simon bar Jonah. Interesting that Simon Peter, his name when Jesus talked to him and uh, Caesarea Philippi, he says, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but my Father which is in heaven. You see, two men, two of them are Galilean Jews. Two of them were given a task to preach the good news of first repentance and then salvation. To who? To the Gentiles. And the two of them said no in the beginning. One of them said no, and the stinking stomach fluid of a large fish for three days may have convinced him to say yes. <laughs> and the other one said no, because what he saw was not really causing him any appetite. Jonah and Simon bar Jonah. Two Galilean Jews. That their obedience changed the world. Obedience indeed is better than sacrifice. In Jonah chapter 1 verse 2. Arise, go to Nineveh. The largest city in the world of that time. Mosul of today in Iraq. And that great city and cry out against it. For their wickedness has come up before me. Acts 11, 18, when they heard these things, they became silent and they glorified God saying, then God has also granted to the Gentiles repentance to life. Something happened. The time has come. And from the moment the Jews rejected Jesus and the Gentiles started accepting Jesus, the era of the time of the Gentile had begun. Interesting. And this is what in the prophecy of Daniel in the ninth chapter. This is exactly what we call 
between the 69th and the 70th week. This is the gap. This is why there is a gap. This is the time for the Gentiles. Because the whole prophecy of Daniel was not about the Gentiles. Seventy weeks have been determined upon your people and your city. It's about Israel. He will deal with Israel again. Once again when the 70th week will begin. That is the last seven years. The tribulation is for Israel's salvation. I always tell people that. But between, why, why is there a, a gap between the 69th and the 70th week? Because that's the time. This is the valley that the prophet could not see. Prophets see things. They don't see anything between the things. They see mountaintops. They don't see the valleys. And between the 69th week, when Jesus entered Jerusalem, Exactly 173,880 days after the decree to rebuild Jerusalem walls and the temple by Artaxerxes. That decree that is being described in Nehemiah chapter 2. Exactly on the day Jesus entered into Jerusalem as prophesied as their king, as their Messiah. And he was cut off. Not for anything he did. And then the temple was destroyed. That is the 69th week. And then in the 70th week, God is going to deal with Israel again. And until then, it's a time of grace that God has extended to the Gentiles. He overlooked those times before, but now he commands... All men everywhere to repent. This is why Paul was speaking and preaching a revolutionary message. It's not about being a Jew or Gentile. Are you a human being? Yes. So God is calling you to repent. You were born in sin. I'm a good man. No, you're not. You think you are, but you're not. Between the fall of the one temple... And the rise of the next temple. Is there a temple in Jerusalem by the way right now? No. When was the, the time of the fall of the temple? 70 AD? The, 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 the time of the 69th week that is being described. All the way to the 70th week. Which Daniel describes another temple. Between those two. And by the way the blueprints for the next temple are ready. I don't know if you know that. The whole temple institute is dedicated to have another temple being built. He says brethren. He means the true believers who follow Christ and live according to the word of God. He's not trying to, to even convince non-believers here. He says brethren to you I'm speaking. To you I'm explaining this mystery. I don't want you to be ignorant he said. To be ignorant is to deny this truth. To hide your face from it. Don't stick your head in the sand. Don't say I didn't tell you. Don't be ignorant. Please. You are fellow believers. I am begging you. You must know this. By the way ignorance is not only the portion that could have been of the Gentiles. Also of Israel. The Bible in Romans 10 says. Brethren my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel. Is that they may be saved. For I bear them, I bear them witness. That they have a zeal for God. But not according to knowledge. For they being what? Ignorant of God's righteousness. And seeking to establish their own righteousness. Have not submitted to the righteousness of God. This is ignorance to think that you can establish your own righteousness by your own deeds. When you are just a sinner. And by the way, I don't want you to be wise in your own opinion. God is not interested in your opinion. I'm not interested either. <laughs> your opinion. <laughs> Proverbs 19.21. There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless the Lord's counsel. That will stand. 
Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declare the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. And unless you have the Holy Spirit and God is in you, you will never be able to think like God. So he's not interested in your opinion. And he's talking about the blindness of Israel. Romans 11, 7 to 10. What then? Israel has not obtained what it seeks, but the elect have obtained it. And the rest were blinded. Paul admits before the church of Rome that Israel was blinded just as it is written. And now he's quoting both Deuteronomy and Psalm. God is giving them a spirit of stupor, eyes that they, may, they should not see and ears that they should not hear to this very day. Deuteronomy 29.4. And David says in Psalm 69.22, Let their table become a snare and a trap, a stumbling block and a recompense to them. Let their eyes be darkened so they do not see and bow down their back. Wait, always. Amazing. Because they hardened their hearts, God... Blinded them. Israel is the only nation that was blinded almost as a nation. And the only nation that has a promise of a national salvation. All Israel will be saved. And by the way, none of them will be saved unless they accept Yeshua HaMashiach. Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. He is the hope of Israel. He is the Messiah of Israel. No one can come to the Father but through Him. He's the way, He's the truth, and He's the life. And He said that to the Jews. And that, look at this. He says, blindness has happened to Israel until. There's an expiration date. He says, the blindness will come to an end at a specific and appointed time. It's not going to be forever. Something is going to happen. He says, until what? Until the fullness of the Gentiles. Fullness. No, what is fullness? Okay, there is a cup. You fill it with water. Comes all the way to the end, okay? That's it. You can't pour more. That's it. The end. That which had to happen has happened. That's it. The fullness of the Gentiles means one thing. No more. Can be saved. By the way of their own choice. <laughs> it's not like God said. Oh. I don't want more Gentiles in my kingdom. <laughs> they will defile my kingdom. <laughs> no. He is calling all men. Everywhere to repent. But at some point. The Antichrist. And the spirit of the Antichrist. I mean they will be completely blinded. Completely given to the lie. So there will be no more. That's it. And if you think for a second that I'm a Gentile. So if there is a rapture tomorrow. I still have a chance. Because in the tribulation I know that there will. Kiss that thought goodbye. <laughs> if you're not accepting him now. Do you really think that when the risk of your head rolling down the aisle. You will then accept him. Matthew 5, 17, do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill, Jesus said. Luke 24, 44, then he said to them, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you. That, say with me, all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. All things must be fulfilled. Not could be, would be, should be, must. Acts 13, 29. Now when they had fulfilled all that was written concerning him. Then they took, down, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a tomb. Isn't that interesting? The description of the crucifixion is being given to us in a way of a script. They... Had fulfilled all that was written concerning him. And after that, they took him down from the tree. They had to cast the lots about his, oh, I mean, everything. 
There's those things must happen. Boom, 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 boom. You cannot skip. Everything must be fulfilled. And he said the Gentiles. By the way, Gentiles, it's the nations. I want to tell you something. The Orthodox Jews don't call pig, pig. They say the other thing. Listen. Yeah, they don't say pig. They say the other thing. And I'm thinking about Jesus telling them to go to the other side. Where the other people who eat the other thing. (laughs) And when they reached the other side, he casted the demons out of legion into the other thing. So in the minds of the Jews, the other people who are on the other side, who eat the other thing. That's why I sprinkle water on the other thing. <laughs> Genesis 26, 4. And I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. Speaking to Israel, to Abraham. And I will give to your descendants all these lands. And in your seed, in the seed of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in Israel, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. There's a clear separation here. God is telling Abraham that in his seed, all the rest of the nations are going to be blessed. Numbers 23, Balaam, you you remember, he's standing there. Balak thinks that he's about to curse Israel. And then he said, for from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him. There he's pointing at Israel, a people dwelling alone, not Reckoning itself among the nations. And and it's interesting because when the Lord talks about you being grafted into the olive tree of Israel. That means you have been separated. Set aside. And then he says, and so. Once the fullness of the Gentiles has come. So and so immediately right after. All Israel. Now what's all Israel? That's a debatable thing. You could have 50,000 books about it right now. What do you mean when you talk all Israel? Look, I am not going to stand here and dig my own grave. I will only quote Zechariah 13. And the reason why I quote Zechariah 13 is because it comes right before Zechariah 14. In Zechariah 13, the Bible says, It shall come to pass in all the land, says the Lord, that two-thirds in it shall be cut off and die, but one-third shall be left in it, and I will bring the one-third through the fire, will refine them as a silver is refined, and test them as gold is tested, and they will call on my name and I will answer them and I will say this is my people and each one will say the Lord is my God now chapter 14 that normally in most Bible comes after chapter 13 is telling us this is regarding Israel and regarding the Gentiles During that war, this is a description of the last war at the end of the tribulation. What you call by a mistake the war of Armageddon. Well, you find that term, the war of Armageddon, I'll pay your trip over there. The war was in Jerusalem. They gathered their forces in the valley, in the place called in the Hebrew, Armageddon. But I want to tell you that in Zechariah 14, he says... In verse 16, and it shall come to pass that everyone who is left of the, all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall go up from year to year to worship the King and the Lord of hosts and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So all Israel will be saved. Those, that third that will be left, that God will bring them through the fire. 
And all the nations that are going to survive the tribulation, those who are left, the Bible says, um, of all the nations which came against Jerusalem, then they will have to go to Jerusalem every year. So Israel will be saved. Israel's salvation is promised. It's promised in Malachi. It's promised in Hosea, in Isaiah, in Jeremiah. The New Testament is not making it up. In Malachi 3, it says, For I am the Lord, I do not change. God says, look, Israel may not follow me right now. Israel may reject me right now. And, 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 and great catastrophe is about to come. But I am the Lord, I do not change. Therefore, you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. Yet from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. Hosea 5.15, I will return again to my place until they acknowledge their offense. Jesus has gone back to heaven until Israel will acknowledge their offense. And look what he says, then they will seek my face in their affliction. They will earnestly seek me. Jesus said to Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you will not see me again until you say, Baruch haba b'shem Adonai. You need to call upon the name of the Lord. You need to invite me to come back. Isaiah 45, 17 to 19. But Israel shall be saved by the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed or disgraced forever and ever. For thus says the Lord who created the heavens, who is God, who formed the earth and made it, who has established it, who did not create it in vain, who formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is no other. I have not spoken in secret in the dark place of the earth. I did not say to the seed of Jerusalem, Jacob, seek me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Wow. Jeremiah 30, verse 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. He's describing the tribulation. And he says, and it is the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. Hmm. Jeremiah 31, 35 to 36. Thus says the Lord who gives the sun for the light by day and the ordinances of the moon and the stars for the light by night who disturbs the sea and his waves roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from me, before me, says the Lord, then the seed of Israel shall also cease from being a nation before me forever. In other words, God says, look, there will be no more Israel or no more Gentiles only when there will be no more moon, stars, and sun. Until then, Israel is a nation before me and no one can destroy them. And that is what I'm trying to tell the Iranians. Listen. <laughs> don't build rockets to hit us. Build rockets to hit the moon, the stars, and the sun. Because only when they will not be there, then Israel will no longer stand before the Lord. <laughs> By seeing how God is dealing with Israel after 2,000 years, we can conclude that the time of the Gentiles is coming in. I want you to understand, for 2,000 years, The Jewish people feel like God hid his face from them. Especially when it came to the Holocaust. And God opened the door for all of you. Bacon eaters. <laughs> he opened the door and he said, those who were not my people are now my people. If you indeed repent. And now after 2,000 years, he's shifting back. To Israel. He brings them back to their land. Jerusalem is back in their hand. The Hebrew language is back. A spoken language. The land is back alive. They prosper. They, I mean. We are the generation. That shall not pass away. 
because we see the fig tree blooming. Now, do we have a chance after the rapture? <laughs> I'm digging my grave now even deeper. 2 Thessalonians 2, 9 to 12. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish. Because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Those who reject Christ when he was here, when, he, when the time for the Gentiles was, when there was still time to preach the gospel. Those who did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. For this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. I wouldn't bank on rejecting Christ now in being saved throughout the tribulation when everyone will take pleasure in unrighteousness. You know, we're out. Let's party. Revelation 16, 8 to 11. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun and power was given to him to scorch men with fire and men were scorched with great heat. And they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues. And they did not repent and give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast. And his kingdom became full of darkness. And they not their tongues be because of the pain. Yet they blasphemed God, of, the God of heaven, because of their pains and their sores. And they did not repent of their deeds. That's the picture of the world throughout the tribulation. 2 Corinthians 6, 1 and 2. We then, as workers together with him, also plead with you not to receive um, the grace of God in vain. For he says, in an acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now, say now, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. This is why the urgency is there in the scriptures. Now. When it's, when it's still possible. When you can still understand. After that. You will be so. Blinded. By the schemes of the devil. And even when you know that God has the power to stop these things. You will not repent. And give him glory. But you will blaspheme him. You know, this is, this is amazing. You know, I had a chance uh, a few years ago to, on a mission to interview a member of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard who defected to the West, came to Germany, and I was there in Germany. I speak German. So I sat with him and... I wrote a report, and, and the one thing that he said that was amazing to me, which I must say, I, I knew a lot of things about them, I didn't know that one. He said to me this, everyone from the least of the soldiers to the top commanders are all on drugs. They're all using drugs. They're all being given drugs daily, weekly, monthly. The supply of drugs to the Iranian Revolutionary Guard is a must for them to do what they do. Full control over them because they need something that you have. And you understand that more and more countries are legalizing drugs. More and more cities are legalizing drugs. Drugs become, an, if once we used to say, say no, now you say, say where? It's unbelievable. I want to tell you, the world is being drugged. And they will just do whatever Satan wants. They just, just, he will just use them as a pawn. It's, it's unbelievable. So I want, to, I want to encourage all of you as we conclude it right now. Do not push away. Do not reject. Today and now is the day of salvation. 
Father, I thank you so much for your word. Your word is true. And we ask that you will sanctify us by your truth. We thank you for the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. We thank you that only through repentance we can really accept uh, salvation. We thank you that you have opened the door wide to the Gentiles all over the world to repent and to become not just children of God, but heirs of the kingdom, but also people who will reign with you here on earth. We thank you that you have made even the Gentiles priests and kings over the earth. We thank you, Father, that you also have a promise for Israel's salvation. And until then, we pray that you will open the eyes of their hearts to understand their rebellion and to understand their blindness. And Father, we pray that more and more will accept Yeshua HaMashiach and escape that tribulation and that time of terrible terrible events that will befall this world. We thank you and we bless you in the name that is above all names, the name of the Holy One of Israel, the name that of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Lamb of God, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, Emmanuel, in the name of Jesus, Yeshua, we pray. And all of God's people say, Stand, I want to proclaim the ironic blessing upon you in the Hebrew language. The one from Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 to 26. And I will do that in Hebrew. Yevarechecha Adonai Vishmerecha. Yaer Adonai Panavelecha Vichuneka. Yisa Adonai Panavelecha. Veyasem lecha shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord shine his face towards you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance towards you and give you his peace. That peace that surpasses all understanding that only the Prince of Peace, the Lord of Peace can give now and forever, here and everywhere. In the name of Jesus, amen.